Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to my corner of the internet and YouTubes and I did get my copy of The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I'm gonna say before I even start talking about this book that I'm not a Lee Bardugo fan. I have DNF to the first book in every series that she's written except I did push through Ninth House and it was me pushing through it because it was such a popular book. I did get Hellbent and I think I read the first chapter and just lost interest. But looking back, I'm seeing all the reviews for for Hellbent and it winds up being everybody's favorite thing she's written. So I will eventually go back and give that another shot. But I am starting with the disclaimer that I'm not a fangirl of Leigh Bardugo. It's something about her storytelling or the way she writes. I just don't get myself invested in her world or her characters. And I'm gonna say that because I know that's a very unpopular opinion in any bookish community here on the internet, on BookTube, BookTok, or Bookstagram, but we all have our own opinions, so please don't, please don't come at me too hard. I was not gonna pick this book up, but at the end of the day, I am a sucker for sprayed edges, even if there's no design, and the cover just had me really intrigued. The cover, the familiar, and the little bit I did know going into this book about the time frame it was set up in, which is during the Spanish Inquisition. I'm not sure which century. This wasn't like a 50 year inquisition, this spanned centuries. Um, but I was intrigued and I wasn't intrigued by the story, but I was intrigued by the setting. So the day before release day, I pre-ordered this. I started reading it right away. So I've already, I've already finished it. And I do, I do have thoughts. As far as I know, I'm gonna put this down. I don't wanna hold it the whole time. As far as I know, this is a standalone. I honestly don't see how the story would continue unless maybe we're talking about different characters. That's not spoilery, it's just the ending was very complete, I think. And I don't think there needs to be a second book in the series, but I'm pretty sure this is a standalone. And just looking at the cover art, yeah, now I'm gonna pick it up again. Well, here you go. Just looking at the, can the cover art and the The cover art and the title, he's a troublemaker. I kind of went into this thinking it was gonna be kind of about vampires. I don't know why, just based on the cover art and the title alone, and then I read the synopsis and I know it wasn't gonna be about that, but I wasn't sure which direction we would go into. But I was getting very Ren Bram Stoker's Renfield vibes from just the cover and the cover art. I was thinking maybe there would be a vampire in the Spanish Inquisition, but no, that's not what we're dealing with here, or is it? Maybe. That's not our main character. All right, so we are in Madrid during the Spanish Inquisition, like I already said. I'm not sure which century, but it does seem to be pretty far along just based on our environment. This isn't the beginning. This is probably two, maybe even three centuries into the Inquisition. And our main character, Lucia, is a scullery maid with a secret. Actually, she has she has two secrets. Um, the first one being that she is Jewish, which is not the best thing to be. Um, at this point in history, she does everything possible to hide her heritage. Her parents have already passed away and her aunt got her uh, a position as a maid in a home. Um, the only person that knows about her heritage and her, her family's lineage is her aunt. Um, and she also knows Lucia's other secret, which is that she can perform... Mm, in the book, they're called miracles. I'm still holding this book. <laughs> in the book, they're called miracles. So... She can fix broken things, she can make plants grow, she can construct things out of bits and pieces. I think she can heal herself. I think that was that was mentioned, but I, I don't know. Like, it, I, my attention wasn't super grabbed, but I'm remembering that she can heal herself. This isn't a magical world, this isn't a fantasy world. This is our world with our history and our myths. Um, and something worse than just being, you know, she's just being Jewish and the Spanish Inquisition and pretending to be a regular good old Catholic girl going to confession all the time and saying her rosary. Um, she's also a Jewish girl that is performing miracles and miracles are something that have to be gifts from God. And if you're performing all these miracles and it's not from a heavenly being, then you're obviously in, in cahoots with a demon or you're a witch. So these are things that she kind of has to keep secret. She doesn't want anyone finding out one or the other. Her mistress, Valentina, who is a huge role in this story, she is a stuck up Karen <laughs> that she just likes making both of her servants miserable. She's miserable too, and that's just, 
that's just who she is. She has no children. Her household is not a wealthy one. She's kind of just like on the outskirts of society. She's in a loveless marriage. But when she finds out that Lucia can perform these miracles, she basically goes out of her way to lose Lucia, to use Lucia as, as kind of a party trick for, for dinner parties so she can climb the social ladder. Like people will go to dinner and see that Lucia can perform these miracles or this one particular miracle at the beginning and this will help her climb the social ladder. She'll get invited to more parties. She'll be able to have better opportunities, which she wouldn't have been able to get um, because her husband's business is a failing one and she's just, she's just miserable. This works a little too well because even though the family does get noticed and she does start climbing the social ladder and she does get all these invitations, the wrong people start to notice and one of these people can help him. He has a master who is trying to get back in the good graces of the king and we learn early on that Santangel, 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 I'm gonna stick with that, that Santangel is not all that he seems. He's much older than he seems. He has an air and a reputation about him. He's not He's not the most lovable guy. We don't learn about the depth of his character until maybe halfway through the book, so I'm not gonna get into that. Um, but his master, whose name I cannot recall because I'm a terrible book reviewer, <laughs> is not the only one trying to win the king's favor and trying to get under the good graces of the king. So we are led into my least favorite trope. And had I known this was coming, I definitely would have not picked up this book. It has two strikes against it already for me, but I just, I, I stuck through it and I got to the end and I did it all in a day. But that is we get into a magical competition with other, other people that can perform miracles and their patrons. And I am just not a fan of magical competitions in books. I, I don't like the way it builds a story forward. I don't like the way it develops a character. I don't like the backstories it gives. I get really bored in magical competitions and stories. And that's... So for my enjoyment personally, this was not the best direction, but I kept, I kept on keeping on. It's not, the competition isn't a bad one. There aren't like 50 million characters. I think there's four. So not too overwhelming, but it is an integral part of our story. Anything I say about the story going forward does kind of get into spoiler territory, so I don't want to want to talk too much more about that. Um, the world building? Mm, I can't really say world building because this is our own world, but the world was conveyed really, really well. You could tell that Lee Bardugo did put in the research. She didn't just like remember something from her college history courses or her high school world history book and throw it in the book. She, she did her research, the clothing, the climate even the chocolate, like it was really well conveyed and portrayed and I do appreciate that. I am a huge history buff, even the more the more negative sides of it from that from that part of our of our timeline. And also the characters are are really well developed. There's not they're developed in the beginning. Like we know who the characters are. There's not a lot of character development throughout the story. There's not a lot of development growth. Like we don't see them become better or worse as people. We just, they're very, they're very well-rounded and they're very individual and we know who each of our characters are. The only really development I saw and the only, the only like storyline I really wanted to follow was from one of our side characters actually. And I really, I really loved seeing where she wound up, but that's another thing I can't really get into. But as far as our main characters, I didn't really see any character growth, even though they were well-developed and individualized. There is... Ro oh, here we go. There's romance in this book and I don't think it was necessary at all. I know we have to have some sort of romance in these books. At some point it makes for a good subplot, but it just felt jaded to me. 
it didn't feel necessary it wasn't slow burn or anything it just felt like to me maybe i wasn't paying attention to the slow burn but because i'm so jaded from reading like smut on the side but it went from like zero to you're the most important thing in my life like within the blink of an eye i wasn't even sure how that developed or where it developed from it just felt really unrealistic to me and really unnecessary and even though it's it's not a romance book it does kind of become a love story which something else is you're not expecting and the relationship becomes a huge factor in how things play out and i think um i think honestly the romance aspect could have gone a different way it could have been worked out or written entirely out of the story and we could have essentially had the same story minus romance and if anyone ever wants to know how i think that could have been completely written out we i can talk about that in a whole video but um even the like i know it's not a romance book i know it's not romanticy but i don't i don't want to call them spicy scenes the love scenes because they weren't they weren't spicy they felt dispassionate and i'm sorry but if i'm a virgin and if i'm about to get it on with someone that i'm all hot and bothered for then i'm going to be a little nervous but i'm going to be passionate and it just felt very just like I, like i said maybe i'm the jaded one because i have read some pretty nasty fantasy books i mean like two months ago i read ice planet barbarians but this didn't feel like sweet love this just felt jaded to me and I don't know, I think it was the love here, the romance, it was unnecessary. And it was kind of unbelievable to me at least. I don't know, could have could have gone without that, Miss Bardugo. What I do think was an underlying theme that I did appreciate was that all of our characters want more. Some want more love, more power, more status, more money, more freedom, everybody wants more. And there is an underlying theme of, of greed, but I don't think, hmm, but I don't think it's ultimately conveyed as a bad thing. I don't think anyone is like a sinner in this book. And I'm really tiptoeing on the edge of spoiler territory here. So I'm not going to go further than that. But there is an underlying theme of greed. And especially especially from Lucia um, and, her, and her mistress, we really do see... And Santangle's Santangle, I can't, I can't. From his, from his master too, we do see just how how greed can just kind of corrupt but it didn't lead to where i think it could have gone i did enjoy the environment and the characters but the story itself it's just it's not for me the writing isn't for me it's not flowery writing i don't know what it is about lee bardugo that i just don't enjoy for per like i think it just it might just be her stories like maybe her stories are just not for me i like historical fiction i like fantasy I, everything about this book should have worked for me, but it, it didn't. And for personal enjoyment, please don't come at me for personal enjoyment. I'm going to rate this book a two out of five. Um, from a more critical perspective, I'm going to say it's a 3.5 because again, like the romance was unnecessary and it felt weird yeah. and meow and just it could have gone so many different ways. And the underlying themes I think could have been more in the forefront but the characters and the world were, were great, but it's just not not what not what I think it could have been. I personally probably won't be picking up any more Lee Bardugo books again. I really did get this at the last minute and I did jump on the hype train for it. I think I'm gonna try Hellbent one more time and if I'm not into it right away, I'm gonna DNF it because I kind of feel like I did waste a good chunk of my reading time on this book. And I, I do kind of regret it because there are so many books that I'm really anticipating and really excited for. And this wasn't one of them. But she's just not my favorite storyteller. Story it's, it's just what it's got to be. There's nothing wrong with her writing. It's just her stories aren't for me. My last criticism is a bit spoilerly, spoilery. So if you want to bow out now, that's cool. <laughs> much, much thanks for hanging out as long as you did. If you could hit that thumbs up. Or maybe subscribe to my channel because I have like no subscribers on this channel. It would it would really help me out so I can keep making these videos. All right, so here we go. Spoiler territory. Is everybody gone? This isn't going to be an end to the story. This isn't a huge storyline, but I think at least five times in this story. I don't know why I'm pulling my hair. I think at least five times in this story, Lucia is cautioned in one way or another about Suntangle. Suntangle. 
angel. We'll call him angel. About him, it's it, like someone says, "Don't don't trust him because he's a man," or he, he himself says, "I am a man after all." Or she says, "Are you are you actually a man?" And it's just that is repeated at least three. I don't want to say at least five. But at least three times specifically by different characters, and I think that could have foreshadowed something. And I would have loved if that had foreshadowed something that would have led this story down a completely different path. If we had had some, um, some, some, some deceit from him or just some typical, like stereotypical Chad behavior from him, I would have honestly liked that more. Yes. I would have honestly liked that more than the ending we got. And I'm not saying I would have liked a chat in the beginning and then he progresses into this really great guy. Like, no, I would have preferred it if he was a chat at the end. Like if he was a douche and and he just was like, see a girl. But that's not what, it's not what happens. Um, so that's as far into spoilers as I get. But I think it would have made the story way better once again. Mm. I think it would have given us a much better ending than the one we got. Anyway, now I'm officially done ranting about this book. I never want to say that I wasted my time reading a book, but how little enjoyment I got reading this book, I do feel like I wasted a good chunk of my reading time. And that is not something I want to say. I'm glad this was a short book. I think it's only 400 pages. Um, so I, it's not like I spent a week reading it, but if this had been maybe a little bit longer and I had kept at it, I think this is the sort of thing that would trugger a reading slump for me. If you are a Lee Bardugo fan, then by all means have at it. But for me, this just wasn't it. And I don't know, I'm waiting to see what other people are gonna say and other people review it. I'm expecting everyone else to give this five stars. And that kinda kinda sucks for me, being the, the weirdo that doesn't like Lee Bardugo. But um, thanks for hanging out and I will see you guys next time if you come back, even though I, I don't like everybody's favorite author. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to Leo Carew now. I think he's my new comfort author. I'm gonna go back to reading about war between other species of humans. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me and my chaotic cats and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.